It's my pleasure to introduce the next, uh, uh, the next uh, panel. Uh, and um, firstly, um, I'll turn my attention to uh, the um, councillor for the Sydney Newcastle region, the chairman of uh, the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, Roy RC. He needs no introduction. Um, and uh, as you, uh, you saw, he, uh, he has been uh, hard at work practising uh, April Sun in Cuba. <laughs> and those moves. On a more serious note, uh, I do want to introduce um, our second um, uh, panel speaker, uh, Fred Hooper, who's um, known to many of you, but he's a Malwari man and chair of the Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations. Um, Fred has um, kindly um, agreed to uh, be uh, part of the panel to talk um, with you today. Um, and the topic is, of course, water, Aboriginal water rights. Um, we, did in, we, we did invite um, uh, Renee Woods, um, who's the uh, chair of the Murray Darling, uh, sorry, the Murray Lower Darling Rivers Indigenous um, Nations. Um, but he's at the AGM for that organisation um, today. Um, the, important, uh, that the importance of these two um, organisations, the um, uh, Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations, or NBAN, otherwise known as, and the uh, Murray Lower Darling Rivers Indigenous Nations, or Mildren, uh, otherwise uh, referred to, um, is, um, should not be under, uh, under uh, estimated in terms of um, their involvement um, in advising government around the Murray-Darling system. Um, so it's really good that we've got uh, Fred uh, and the chairman on the stage to, today. Um, over the last few decades, um, uh, we've seen our waters under greater threat, um, greater threat than ever before. Um, and um, it goes with the legacy, unfortunately, um, of land theft. We now um, are going through that next uh, very clear um, phase of water theft. And uh, like land, um, water is the lifeblood um, for many of um, our communities, but, 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 but for us. And um, it's essential for our survival. Um, but the water in this uh, country, um, both fresh and salt, um, it's, um, it's our birthright. Um, and it's a key source of our sustenance, of course. And without water, we can't survive. So um, I uh, will um, hand over to um, our two panel speakers, starting with, uh, with Fred, who's got a presentation. Um, and uh, you can come up here, it's probably easier. And you have a clicker here. Uh, thank you very much, James. I also would like to acknowledge uh, the Wanarua Sovereign First Nations that we're standing on today, and I'd like to also acknowledge that they've never ceded their sovereignty, or they've never acquiesced to the Crown of Great Britain, um, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and encourage young elders of the future, or elders of the future, to lead with honour, respect uh, for all because it's about respect and, and we've seen before, you know, we talk about um, how we live and, 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 and it's all about respect and respecting others as well. Um, as James said, I'm a Murawari man. I grew up uh, from on the Kalgara River, a little place called Wollongringle. Um, water's sort of been in my life for a long time because I remember making those little tin boats, you know, and putting them on the river and trying to get the mud to clog the holes up and then the boats start sinking. So, um, And I spent six years in the Royal Australian Navy, so I went from um, fresh water to salt water, both above and underneath, so I spent six years on submarines as well. Um, I worked for the Commonwealth Public Service for nine years. Um, one of my bosses was honoured last night, a guy called Tom Briggs. He taught me a lot about community and community development and stuff like that. Um, but 
I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about the Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations and what we're doing around water in the Murray-Darling Basin. Um, Newswalk has been a part of NBAN since its, its inception. We had a, a meeting in Moree back in 2009. I think Councillor Murray, you were there um, as well. I think Councillor Cromlin was there as well. Um, so, and then after that, we formed a working group um, to, to form the Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations. And one of the former workers of, of the New South Wales Land Council was actually on that. I think, Jeff, you were there as well, weren't you, in Moree? Yeah. So, um, just to cut a long story short, um, New South Wales Land Council is a member of NBAN as well. So they're a corporate member of NBAN. So as I said, we started in, um, in 2009. We were heavily involved in the development of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. The Murray-Darling Basin Plan is the only Commonwealth statute that recognised in statute law Aboriginal nations. The only Commonwealth statute law that recognised Aboriginal nations. So there's two parts to the Murray-Darling Basin. There's the Northern Basin and the Southern Basin. We cover that bit in red. Um, we go just a little bit above Dubbo um, because we're nation-based. Um, so the, the Wiradjuri Nation sort of comes down into, into the Southern Basin and also the Barkindji Nation, they come down into, into the Southern Basin and they're, they're members of NBAN. NBAN have 22 sovereign First Nation members um, and I suppose the nations elect two people to NBAN um, as their representatives. So this is a little thing about the Murray-Darling Basin. As you can see there, there's, there's actually 48 Aboriginal nations within the Murray-Darling Basin. There's, um, there's $24 billion worth of agriculture. There's $8 billion worth of tourism. You know, there's um, um, fishing employs 10,000 people. There's 85,000 Aboriginal people according to the census in the Murray-Darling Basin. We don't get much um, from that, that $24 billion agricultural um, stuff in the Murray-Darling Basin. So um, the, other, the other role that Enban and Mildren have is in water resource planning. So as part of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, every state has to develop a water resource plan and Chapter 10, Part 14 of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan requires them to, to put into those, those water resource plans, um, you know, um, Aboriginal values and uses, but more importantly, our objectives and outcomes based on the, uh, our, Abri our Aboriginal values and uses. When we look at the, the objectives of that, um, the objectives become what they call accredited text, and the objectives then become law. So in the state laws, the objectives become laws. Um, the other role that we have, we, we really don't get involved too much in the water resource planning, except for assisting the states in talking to people. Um, you know, New South Wales is going through a water resource planning process at the moment. Um, we'll have a bit of a dilemma later in the year because all of the water resource plans have to be developed and accredited by June 2019. So from February, we will be working um, tire tirelessly to, to see if we can get those water resource plans accredited. Um, NBAN and Mildren are responsible for assessing the water resource plans um, in relation to what they call Chapter 10, Part 14 and other parts of the plan. And our recommendation then goes to the Minister and it goes unfettered, so it goes unchanged by the Murray-Darling Basin Authority and the Minister takes advice on, on our, our or he, he makes a decision on our advice whether to actually accredit that water resource plan or not. The minister is uh, David Littleproud. Yeah, that's Littleproud. He took over from Barnaby, but thank God for that. Um, and then we kind of have a couple of Bibles. <laughs> um, the first Bible is probably our constitution um, by law. The second Bible is the Union of Sovereign First Nations um, of the Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations. So in May 2010, the nation signed 
a treaty of unity amongst ourselves. And the treaty of unity is simply an agreement for us all to work together um, on that one common goal. I remember a couple of years ago, I went to a place called Boulder, Colorado, just outside of Denver. And I went to this big conference and there was, um, there was a guy there from the American EPA, Environmental Protection Authority, and he said to us, oh, we'll have a cup of coffee afterwards. And um, by the time Friday came, they had to book a room upstairs because there was about 60 people that come from around, around America and I'm sitting there next to this guy and he, he walked up and sat next to me and looked over at the folder that he had and um, it had the White House on it. And I said, mate, would he work for the White House? He said, yeah. He said, I, I actually advised President Obama on the, the Clean Water Act in America. And I said, you know, anyhow, discussions went, it, went ahead and we said, why did you want to meet with us? They said, we want to know how you brought 48 nations together. And our answer was one issue. Not 15 different issues, not a whole, whole range of things, but one issue, and that was water. Um, we also do a lot of work in the Murray-Darling Basin. This is a part of a, uh, an environmental water guidance project that we're doing where we looked, this was a desktop study, where we looked at what were the reports that were out there um, and what did those reports mean and, and what do they mean about um, Aboriginal um, values and uses and how we use the system. Now, we we're going to bring a little turtle up there that moves up and down the screen, but we, we decided not to. So this is, those reports actually showed our connection to country. And if you look at that map, You'll see a river, the Narran, the Balon, the Barwon River, the Kalgoa River. We also did another project called Use and Occupancy Mapping, and it's about sitting down with people and, 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 and seeing how they use, use the land. Um, we interviewed 109 people over a, a whole range of towns and um, came up with over 26,000 uses of the river from 107 people. Imagine if we did everybody that, that, that lives in the Murray-Darling Basin. Um, another major program was the National Cultural Flows Research Project, um, which had two trial sites, um, Kuruman Swamp at Woolamringle, and the other one was Tigimbi um, down, down near Hay. So Ian Woods um, had a lot to do with that as well um, at Tigimbi. And from that, there were three booklets that were produced, and this one is, is Cultural Flows Guide um, this is an old version, um, so it's a cultural flows guide for the, for the nations. So it's how the nations go around developing their cultural flows. Um, NBAN's taken it and, and, and um, because it's a guide, we, we've modified it fractionally. So we're looking at nation planning. And the nation planning involves... It's, it, it, it involves a three-step, ten-stage process. So we go out and we talk to communities, we talk to the nations, and we look at what their objectives and, and that are around, um, you know, spiritual, cultural, environmental, social and economic objectives. Um, it's a nation-based process. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, we work through the delegates that are within NBAN and we're hoping to work through the New South Wales Land Council and local land council as well so that we can get the best objectives that are out there for the, for the, for the communities and, and the nations. And this is going to be built around an international um, framework called the uh, Sustainable Environmental or, and Economic Accounting System. Um, we have a, a, an expert that's based in Melbourne that will be writing it up into this, what we call the SEA framework. So with the SEA framework and all this, we can actually go to the World Bank and say, in Gonya needs this, we need investment in that, or we can go to the Australian government and say, in Gonya needs investment in this, or whatever. Um, put the dollar signs up there because in May, the Federal Minister announced um, a, a range of packages for the Northern Basin and the Southern Basin, and everybody talks about this $40 million for water. And there was one comment on Facebook, NBAN got $40 million for water, but we never got nothing. 
So uh, we're working with the Department of Agriculture, who is administering the, what they call the deal sheet uh, that was negotiated between Tony Burke and, and, and uh, Little Proud um, for First Nations people within the Northern Basin. And NBAN is putting up a model to administer that 20 million in the north, um, and the model is a, a, a Northern Basin Aboriginal Water Trust, where we can um, we can buy the water, manage the water, or the trust can buy the water, manage the water, work with the nations, work with the communities, work with properties that that, that haven't got water, um, so we can look at economic, cultural, uh, environmental, and social benefits. Um, from that 20 million. There's a raft of other, other, other uh, measures as well. There's um, procurement measures that are in, in the deal sheet within the northern Murray-Darling Basin. So um, Aboriginal businesses and Aboriginal people have to be, um, have to be uh, employed in that. I noticed uh, on Facebook, or I just got to notice that the Wool Kenya Weir is going ahead. Right? So, so they have to employ Aboriginal people in um, in, in Wilkenya. So that's my um, presentation. I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us, uh, Chairman. And yeah, Fred, I, I know the field and I get a lot of my uh, information on Facebook too. But all well, the feedback as well. But on, on a serious note, uh, if you'll notice on the agenda that it was um, Councillor Chapman that was supposed to uh, uh, present with um, the Chairman in relation to this matter. However, he, uh, he wasn't feeling well, so I've decided to um, backfill for him, as any good Councillor or Chairman would do. Uh, it, just in terms of opening remarks, uh, like the relationship with Native Title yesterday, we had the Chairman here, uh, Michael Bell, uh, plays a very, very important role in relation to that space. Uh, I see uh, Fred, uh, Enban and Mildren as being the experts in that space in relation to water. However, in saying that, uh, I also see another major player in that space, and that is you, our local Aboriginal Land Council, particularly them river communities, where uh, we have a responsibility, not only for salt water, we have a responsibility for fresh water. And uh, we have a, a responsibility for the whole state of New South Wales. Uh, recently, uh, we invited uh, and Ban and Mildred to council, formally invited uh, extended invitation to both chairs and Giller uh, to come to council to start that conversation. And it was a, uh, you know, it was a productive meeting, but it all comes back to uh, that very thing that we always talk about, and that's relationships. While ever Fred's in a conference, with our local Aboriginal Land Councils, or Michael Bell in relation to native title, or indeed uh, our last agenda item, the Registrar, I think that gives us a real good opportunity to be able to build on them relationships. And Fred, in relation to that $40 million, Newswalk, uh, with, with Newswalk support, and the role that I've got on the Prime Minister's uh, uh, co-chair of the Prime Minister's Advisory Council, we, we need to use them relationships to make sure that you get adequate resources uh, that service our local Aboriginal land councils in relation to water as well, because they're a major player. We have members, like them 40 plus nations, we have 120 local Aboriginal land councils across the state. We have a, and I'm preaching to the converted, we have a, a membership of 25,000 members. So we are, we are a major player in this space and have been for a long, long time. You know, Councillor Murray uh, is a passionate advocate when he talks about no, no water out at Wilcannia and the river system, how damaging it is. Um, and we, we noted, Mr Chairman, uh, the importance of 
uh, that partnership. And a partnership doesn't mean uh, one working over the top of the other. You know, our LAOCs are dedicated to their communities uh, right across the whole state. Um, from the Murray-Darling Basin to the Clarence to the Maclay, all river systems, all communities, all country. And uh, whilst we've got access to the, the powers to be, and let's face it, we live in a, we live in a system where, unfortunately, uh, we, have to, we have to use them relationships to try to lever uh, resources to go out to our communities or our local Aboriginal land councils. And we've got relationships at that level. And I think, uh, Chairman, if we can, and we've already spoke about how we, how we better utilise them relationships to benefit all, uh, all people that are, particularly them uh, river communities, that uh, it was, it, it's the lifeblood of them communities. And we hear it on a daily basis. I noticed when the drought, uh, and they even put a, uh, what do they call him, not a, what's Barnaby Joyce's new job? He's a envoy, envoy, yeah, or envoy or convoy or whatever you want to call him. You know, they had one, they had, they, they, they've appointed him for, for drought. Now, our, com our communities are facing uh, them issues as well. And we don't hear a lot about our Aboriginal people or our, our Aboriginal communities when it comes to drought. It affects us as well. So uh, I think the stronger our relationships, the, the more united front. And we have our... Look, Gillow won't agree with us. And I'll dare say Fred won't agree with us. And that's OK, providing we're doing it behind closed doors. But when we come out and, and, it's, not, and it's, it's out in the open, then I think we sing off the same, same song, song sheet. Because with the support of this network and our local Aboriginal land councils and the political capital and the political clout that we've got at the moment, we can help you achieve your goals and your aspirations under that water, uh, the water plan, providing that our, our LAUCs are front and centre in relation to the, to the, uh, uh, to the partnership. The, um, Councillor, uh, Deputy Chair, uh, and also uh, uh, Councillor uh, Chapman, uh, extremely, extremely important about, uh, sorry, passionate about how this resource has impact on their communities, uh, particularly the saltwater mob. And I was talking to the, uh, the ladies from the Clarence, and uh, they said they'd noticed the decrease and that's a big river, that Clarence River. You know, the decrease in the water that's flowing in that Clarence. A major, major concern. And uh, to highlight that, Fred, I'm hoping that a, a relationship with you guys to say, well, um, Newswalk is backing uh, NBAN, Mildren, whoever it is, to say, uh, to, to make, to, to put the point across that uh, our communities aren't happy, either we need more resources uh, or whatever the case may be so that we're backing you guys as well. And I think that's, I think moving forward, that's how the relationship should be. And I'm not going to stand here and say that I'm an expert, but what I'm really, really good at, really, really good at, is making sure that uh, whoever we need to talk to, that we get direct access to them. Because we can talk to each other until we're blue in the face. But if we don't have impact at that other level, or communicate that other level, then it's falling on deaf ears. So, I, I just, just on closing, I, I wanted to um, thank uh, Fred and also uh, Mildred and, and Ben for uh, extending the, the opportunity to be able to formulate a relationship in its early days, its early days. And the councillors are really, really keen, really, really keen to see how this relationship can, 
not bear fruit but bear more water for our local Aboriginal land councils. And it is, like James said in his opening remarks, it is a, it's a resource that we can't live without. So, uh, Fred, thank you. And uh, I hope that uh, that sort of uh, painted a picture in relation to our role with Newswalk. Yeah, we're going to get Johnny Pam. Just two seconds, I'll be finished. Uh, in relation to our role and, and what our role can be. And I'm relying on you as local Aboriginal land councils through your elected councillors to bring them issues up to council so then we can pro progress them if need be. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, look, we are going to have uh, a few questions, a couple of questions, um, and then we're going to go to morning tea. For those of you that haven't already booked out of your motel rooms, please do it, otherwise we get charged another night. Um, so, look, we are going to take questions. Um, please, um, these are questions. Um, don't make statements. If you want to make statements, there's another time, another place for that. So, a question. Pam. Pam. Pam Andy from Dead. Um, Lau. Fred, I know that we've got all the water down on the Murray and the Darling, and we, the Land Council sits there. I just want to know the southern, the southern region. Um, mid, mid, what, what, what the other group is? Mildred. Mildred. So who sits on Mildred at that, that level? Is South Australia sits at, at, on that board too as well? And who are the Aboriginal people? And now they get elected to be on that board because Land Council has not been consolidated in the 12 years since I've been in Land Council. Um, thanks, Pam. NBN membership is nation-based, so I'd assume it's Bakanji um, down that area. Um, they have elected two people to, to Mildren. Um, I think it's through their native title process. Don't, give me, uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure what their, their process is. But um, certainly with NBAN, um, people are elected on a nation base through their own nation governance structures. So a lot of, lot of, um, a lot of nations now are using the native title structure as their governance structure through their prescribed body corporates. Um, and a lot of them are, are electing people through that process uh, to both NBAN and Mildren. You'd have to ask Mildren um, who they are, um, who are the people that are elected on Mildren, because I don't know who they are, sis. Um, yeah. And the, the other one to State Land Council. Going back in Dubbo, there was a forum meeting held with Murray Dallin Basin around doing uh, a submission, culture of water. There was no outcome from that submission. So that submission still sits on the shelf, right? And we don't know what the outcome from Murray Dallin Basin. We're not getting any resources at that local level. We're not even training our people up to become working on wetlands or anything around that environment stuff. So if, if Murray Dolan Basin, under the terms and conditions, or if they've got a strategy in there around how your committee's going to work around that resourcing stuff, it'd be good if, if the communities or the LAUGs that sit around that river system can be part of the negotiation around some of the strategy or strategies to put some initiative back in the community? Ani Pam, was, you mentioned Newswalk, uh, the Dubbo meeting. Was that, was that recently? How long ago are we talking? Five years ago. Five years ago. All right. yeah, when when, when Murray, Murray Darling Basin came to the table, table in Dubbo, and I think all the Western mob knows that we were part of that forum, we put in a submission for culture of water when NBAN and Mel Meldrum was actually set it up. We never got a feedback what the outcome, and I still got that book of that submission still sitting on my shelf. Can, uh, Pam, can I, I just say that, you know, as a councillor in, and Westerns on there, we actually attended those meetings, Councillor Ryan probably more so, but I suppose the meetings that were held over the period of time, this is this is where we are at this point in time with Mildred and Enband, and and what is necessary is that land councils that are impacted 
uh, in this nation based along the river where we're actually talking about, you need to become involved and be aware of it. We as Newswalk at, at a state level can take your concerns and your issues of you know, what you're dealing with at the local level. It's important that we actually work together because you know, government like nothing else but to see blackfellas fighting. I'm not saying and, that, and that, No, I'm saying, what I'm saying is... I'm not saying is, that. I'm saying that the submission was done. Yes. I'm looking for an outcome from that submission back to Mildren or to, to in, Red Band, right, in, about the resourcing back into our laos, into our community, around that engagement side of it. And, and this is the process now that they've, they've entered into to engage with local people. We're missing out on money, love. Our, yeah. our Murray River, our border, our boundary, sorry, yep. but our boundary go across the, across the border. It's New South Wales border on the Murray. We're missing out money in all the irrigation stuff, even in the Darling down the end of Wentworth, because yep. I'm on the junction. And the Murray River is feeding everyone yep. across this country. And Ian Woods is not here. They've got an AGM on. So this is what I'm, you know, the land councils that's impacted, we now have got to work together and find out how we can actually ensure that land councils are a part of this process. Pam, um, just to add to that. No, no, you're right, sis. No, that's fine. Um, the, New South Wales land, uh, the New South Wales government under the Murray-Darling Basin Plan has to deliver 20 water resource plans by June 2019. There are people going around now, they've hired consultants um, and they're working to gain Aboriginal people's values and uses so they can actually be included in the water resource plans. New South Wales has a number of licences that we're looking at trying to change. Um, they have the cultural access licence which is 10 megalitres so every, every Aboriginal person in New South Wales can apply for 10 megalitres of cultural water, but they can't use that for economics. The other discriminatory licence that, that, that New South Wales have is a licence for inv uh, economic water. Um, this side of the Great Dividing Range, um, Aboriginal people or any organisation um, can apply for a 500 megalitre economic licence as long as it's in what they call the water sharing plan. So they have to do that within the water sharing plan. The other side of the mountain in the Murray-Darling Basin, that licence is not available to us. So we can't look at economics in the Murray-Darling Basin. Um, that's the reason why NBAN was very instrumental earlier in the year in blocking legislation to change the Murray-Darling Basin Plan um, in the Senate. And because of that, Tony Burke and David Littleproud got together and came up with what they call the deal sheet. Um, NBAN and Mildren have been given $1.5 million each to engage um, Aboriginal people and nations and communities across the respective northern and southern basin. We've just gone through a, re a re recruitment process for a project officer, which we hope is going to start early next year. And that person will be going around talking to communities. They'll be talking to nations. They'll be, they'll be gathering um, a whole information, a whole heap of information that will end up um, in a nation plan that will identify cultural water, environmental water, um, and water for economics. And that gives us a tool then to go back. There's also a, a $20 million economic fund in places like Colorindabri, Warren, St George, Durrambandi. They're going to be the priority communities around that as well. So we need to get on top of that. And we need to talk to land councils and, and, and other, other um, organisations and, and, and people that want to want to start developing businesses. So. Um, I can't speak for Mildred's sister down in the, in the southern part, but all I can say is New South Wales. You know, if you go to Queensland, blackfellas can take as much water out of their system in Queensland as they want for cultural purposes, but they can't take anything for economic purposes. And that's the stumbling block, is our economics.
Thanks, Fred. Um, just to uh, conclude the uh, comment about the meeting, the consultations or engagement that we had some five years ago, um, I will just um, reiterate that uh, Newswalk did lodge a detailed submission as a result of those discussions. At the time, there was no money available. What that submission has resulted in is um, the issue of cultural flows and definition around cultural flows being agreed as an issue, which is now being factored into the further work that's being done now. But there was no money available at the time. Newswalk did do its job in advocating for the network and lodged a detailed submission. Um, so uh, is, there, is there any other questions? Uh, I'm going to take one more question if there's a question. James, just why we're waiting for someone to, if there's going to be another question. Pam, what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, board members of both Mildren, Mildren and uh, NBAN up on uh, either our, face, our Facebook page or Newswalk's uh, website. Correct. Just for local Aboriginal land councils. Yeah. Delegates, uh, are there any other questions? Nathan. Hi, James. Um, again, acknowledging we're on Wanarua country and the subject of water, wow, what a subject. <laughs> the only thing we can't live without. Well done to, the mil to all the inland mob and getting together and fighting the right fight. But I, I must state and hope that is the State Land Council looking at taking up the opportunity of maybe setting up water businesses? I believe that we've got a long-term sustainable business there if we want to talk together with lands that we own where you can extract water off and we can supply water to people. But I'd also like to call on the support of the State Land Council in a project we're working on and it touches on Metro Land Council and a little bit into LARPAS, acknowledging we're talking about the Woolai, what the white fellas call the Cooks River. This place doesn't even have a status as a river. The Gubbars ruined this as the first waterway in Australia. They poisoned it and they polluted it so badly They've degraded it to not even having the status of a river. It's known as a canal. It's owned privately by Sydney Water. And I'd like to hope that the State Land Council could support ourselves at Metro and certainly open up with LARPA where the water runs through to try and get back the status of that water course. We're working with Sydney Water, and I say that openly, while we call them out as inappropriately claiming ownership of water. But that's one of the rarest things I've ever come across in my life. But I'd also acknowledge that there's a lot of goodwill coming out of working on waterways. La Perouse, Gandangara, ourselves and Thurwell worked on the George's River cleanup. And I've got to say, it gives you commonality with Gubbars to try and show them how deadly we are in managing natural resources. So it's actually that way that we can work together. And I know from day one, my old people in Port, Burupai, Thungadi were shattered when the Grinder government took out water rights. So I'd hope that Newswall could start asserting again, we're not just a land council, we're a land and water council, because I think it's been too narrow and only worrying about land. And seeing the heartbreak when you see communities trying to survive who need water, be they from Tumala all the way down to Will Canyon and beyond, and all those people who need water. But there's also a big case on the coast where we can form relationships and get back our status and our kudos by showing gubs how to live properly. Thanks. Just, Thank you. Just, just to quickly, quick, another comment just on that. Um, I don't know whether it was yesterday or today, there's legislation going through the Parliament now, through the Senate, that enables the ILC to buy water as well. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, well, to buy licences. You can't buy water. Under, under, under common law, the only person that owns the water is that big old girl in that big house over there. Her grandson was over here the other day. So the only, people that, the only person that owns the water uh, under common law is her. And they say it's in the right of New South Wales, but we all know it's, it's, it, it's her. So water licences in New South Wales and Queensland and anywhere else, are only, it's only a right to pump as much water as the licence gives you. No matter who you are, um, except um, in Queensland. That's the only place that I've known in Australia that has a law, a specific law, that says Aboriginal people can take as much water as they want for cultural purposes. So, um, yeah, brother, and that, that 
project on the Georges River. That was a beautiful project. It's, it's under the International River Keepers Program, um, and we're hoping to, to look at introducing that within the Murray-Darling Basin as well. Um, you know, and I think that if there's a change of government at the federal level next year, I think you'll see a lot more environmental stuff around water that's going to happen if there is a change of government. And I, I think we need to be ready for that, whether we're land council, whether we're NBAN, whether we're nations, whether we're, we're whatever, we need to be ready for that as well. So, thank you. Yeah, Nate, just a uh, short response. Absolutely, yes. Uh, happy to support uh, Metro and any of my land councils in the, in the Sydney, Newcastle region. Uh, shoot me off some correspondence. I did see that other project that uh, we talked about when we had that meeting down at um, San Susie, and it was a great project. And uh, I think it might have been the Cooks River, was it, or the Georgia? Sorry, yeah. Uh, and just uh, delegates, Newswalk under our strategic plan have got land and water as a part of our, um, our you know, our strategic plan. We're in the process at the moment. Uh, council uh, are discussing a consultation process. To go, to go out to our LAUCs to help build that plan. And, it, and Nathan's point, to Nathan's point, uh, very pertinent that um, with the support of local Aboriginal land councils, then councillors uh, or council will get the direction. But if we haven't got the direction from our local Aboriginal land council, it's really hard to implement a plan, uh, but we need your guidance and, and your direction. So I guess that's an ov open invitation to uh, when, when we start to go out and, and put meat on the bones in relation to the plan, uh, then we'll have a we, we'll have a better we'll come to a point where we're, we're in a better position to start lobbying whoever it needs to be. But in the meantime, uh, please by all means, if if, uh, if you've got a similar request in relation to uh, any of the issues that are happening in your boundaries around water, uh, like Nathan's identified, then uh, there is a process. Let's 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 get it on the table. Uh, and that's what our elected council is for. To uh, these issues come up, uh, then we got to, we, we've got to listen and, and then take that issue up and, and try to resolve it through uh, that political process. Because, like we said earlier, and I think Fred's highlighted as well, Mr. Chairman, that uh, unfortunately we, we're in that space where all the all the decision making in relation to power is over over the other side of. Uh, Macquarie Street, and uh, uh, we need to we need to utilise that process a little bit better.